son. Terrific. Very nice. Yes, sir. Grover Washington Jr. We'll uh, we'll be talking with you a little bit later, right, Grover? Uh, my next guest. Uh, we're all very excited to have this man with us. He is uh, one of the most uh, influential and also controversial figures in the history of American television. This is his latest book entitled P.S. Jack Parr, in which he tells of his adventures inside and outside of the television studio. We're very happy, as I mentioned, to have him with us tonight. Please welcome Mr. Jack Parr. <laughs> have to do that. I was coming out anyhow. <laughs> it's always it, good to see you, Dave. How does it feel to be back here? This is the... a little emotional. Uh, the second time in, I think, 12 years. But, uh, I think of all the crazy things that happened right in the studio. I see Bill Wendell and some of these cameramen are all old friends. It was, it was not really this studio, was it? It was just right across the hall. Well, we used it... Uh, in the prime time show later, um, I used this studio because Johnny kept the, the good one. <laughs> As you know. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but I remember a funny things coming in tonight in the car, thinking of things to talk about tonight. First of all, at, at when I was on, you know, under pressure, if you remember, I, I stammer. And my voice cracks, that's the way it is. But. Um, People adored me, anyhow, you know that. But, anyhow, but anyhow, I had to stammer, and then Barbara Walters, Dave, she couldn't say W's. Uh, she had trouble with W's, and uh, Tom Brokaw has trouble with R's. Yeah. And this is an apocryphal story uh, that I made up. So somebody, <laughs> so, somebody called up and said, uh, I can't stand uh, Parr's stammering, and Barbara Walters can't speak, and, and Brokaw can't say R's, and I want to speak to the president of NBC. So she asked, and she got Bob Mulholland, and he came on the phone, and he said, hello? <laughs> he was down here to see me. You know, uh, I'll tell you, let us, we, we have to do a commercial and station identification, then we'll come back. We've got plenty you of time. You have to do a commercial? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got to do a little You have this. plenty of time? We'll have plenty of time. All you, you want... You won't cancel the Star Spangled Banner no, or the, we, the prayer we, if, or... If anything. we have to, we'll move everything out of here. Okay. We'll All get right. rid of cartoons and anything. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to do this, folks. Uh, take a break for a commercial. We'll be back with Jack Carr. Jack Parr is here. Tomorrow, I, uh, Albert Brooks will be here, and uh, Mary Lou Henner will be here tomorrow oh, night good. also. Um, he's a very f clever yeah, man. We yeah, had him on terrific. a lot. Brooks. Yeah. Uh, I Irving. love Montevani over here. I just think that's, <laughs> I, I, that's my kind of music. You know, when you, when you were, uh, when you did the, the, the Tonight Show, and it was actually the Jack Parr show after a year, wasn't it? They just gave you the whole show, didn't they? Well, I don't know. That was a corporate reason. They changed it from the Tonight Show to the Jack But I never asked for that, and yeah. I was against the change. I don't know. It must have been a corporate reason or else a legal reason. They wanted no part of, of it. You know, they wanted me to take think, the blame from it. it we sued a lot, though. you know. Bobby Kennedy and I were sued for $2 million once, and uh, Winchell sued me for a million dollars. I never lost a penny yeah. in a libel suit. And um, not that I'm proud of having been sued, but uh, I told the truth, and uh, I've never lost a nickel in a, any kind of li li legal action. What were, you, what were you sued for those two times you mentioned? Do you remember? Well, in, in the case with Bobby, it was what Bobby said about Hoffa. He called him a common thief and crook. And I sat there, and I didn't say, and I didn't want, I'm not going to defend Hoffa, so uh, I was included. About Winchell, I, the man is dead, and I don't wish to speak of him again. Okay. Yeah, All it's right. not fair. But, the, you know, the, the point you brought up was just the point I was about to bring up. When, when you did the show, yeah. it was all hell could break loose and very often did yes. and uh what was that ladies uh -huh. and gentlemen of the jury if you take a look at this bit of evidence uh jack describe uh, what is transpiring here well obviously i'm leaving yeah but but the show's not over yet is it no i i did i am um, they cut a joke i did 
a long story. It's very innocent, and if you read my book, you'll find it to be a very amusing story, and you'll find out what exactly happened. The thing was, it was a story about a water closet. Now, how shocking is that today? NBC censored it, then they admitted that they had made a mistake, and uh, I said then, if you made a mistake, then I want you to put it on the next night. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, no, we, we, you can't run the network. And I said, I'm not asking them to run the <laughs> network, although it might, might not be a bad idea, but, but I just don't, um, I, I just think that if you think you made a mistake, you should admit it. Sure. Should. Yeah. Well, they didn't. So I said, well, then, I have a surprise for you. The surprise was I left and quit and was through and had no job at all. Yeah. However, when you consider that we're talking about a water closet story and what is being said today on television and yeah. radio. It's pretty silly. One of the stories that I love to tell that actually is true and the thing about me is believability. I usually people believe it. There was, there is a talk show on the ABC, a sex show, as you know, that answers questions. You know it's true. And uh, they had two ministers on one morning, a fundamentalist minister and um, a book fundamentalist. One was against dancing, just per se, against dancing. The other was against any kind of sex that was not among married couples and particularly not deviant. Yeah. So the phone calls come in. Now, this is what I heard. And the lady said, well, you know, I, I'm puzzled, uh, reverent, uh, uh, deviant. Would you call sex standing up deviant? <laughs> and he said, yes, because it's inclined to lead to dancing. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> there was a, this, this, this is, a, this is a, 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 an innocent story. But the one I, I'm going to tell you was about the, the minister, no, not the minister, it was, um, oh, gee was I forget. Well, let me ask you a question while you're what? thinking about it. Ask me anything. Now, I want to get back to the night that you just packed up and walked off the show. Yeah, now, yeah. What, what we have here in front of you is 90 minutes of network television time, right? Yes. This was what, a Monday or a Tuesday night? I don't remember. So you come out, you do your opening remarks, yes. you, you go to the desk and you say, that's it, folks, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is wrong and I'm leaving. Yes. Now, then what happened? Who, who jumped in? Well, Did the show well, go Hugh, on? Hugh, Hugh Downs fainted. That was the next thing that happened. He was your uh, sidekick, your announcer? Yeah, and Shelley, yeah. Shelley Berman was on. Uh -huh. A really funny inside story. People think that we all love each other so much, and we do, actors really do. But when, when the chips are down, Shelley had just sold a, an album that sold a million copies. And um, he apparently was not supposed to know that he got a golden record. Mm -hmm. But the agent brought it to me, and I was to surprise him and give him this golden record. But in all fairness, when I knew I was going to leave, I told Hugh, I said, Hugh, here are the notes for tonight's show. And, sh and you, you, I'm leaving. Well, he couldn't, he didn't believe it. <laughs> and I, but I went to Shelley. I thought these friends of mine would miss me or say, God, you know, we've been together, and so yeah. and I love you, and good luck, and everything. I said to Shelley, in all fairness, Shelley, I'm leaving. Uh, secretly, all of uh, I'm just going to walk out of here. And Shelley says, what about my golden record? <laughs> <laughs> no one said goodbye. No one said it. it was a strange way. But I remember... It was very yeah. exciting television, though, to, to, to see that. I remember I am slightly paranoid. By that, I mean it, I, I find trouble everywhere. And I'm very... I, I think I'm a modest person, but I always think something's bad going to happen. Sure. And like you, I drive in from the country and uh, in my little sports car, and uh, I wear gym shoes and, uh, and uh, the sweater and slacks. And suddenly, here in the studio, I, I have my own clothes, nice clothes I wear on the show. Then after the show, change back, sure. just, just as you do, Dave. And I got in my car, and I'm on the West Side Highway, on the same highway you're on every night, and I'm going home, and I realize I don't have my wallet. Now that shouldn't be a big issue. We're talking about 50 cents. Yeah. But I can go into panic, <laughs> absolute panic. Then I be begin to talk to myself and say, well, what will I do? The first thing is, I'll take off my wristwatch and say, I'll, this, and, and I'll come back tomorrow and I can get it. I thought, that's kind of corny. <laughs> no, I know what I'll do. I'll tell him I'm Jack Parr. <laughs> and I thought, that not, he may not like Jack Parr, yeah. and that may not be a good idea. Then in my fantasy, I'm getting angrier and angrier at a man I've never met or seen. And I say, I'm going to tell this guy <laughs> that I'm a personal president, a friend of President Kennedy. Yeah. I had lunch with uh, 
the Attorney General last week. That's what I'm going to tell him. <laughs> then I realized that that's so silly. And I said, I'm going to be sensible and not stammer and just admit it in a deep voice without stammering. And I remember pulling up to the toll booth, mad at this man, putting the window down and saying, I don't have any money! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, no. and the guy said, we had a good day. Be my guest. <laughs> but That's I'm inclined to build up these stories and... Uh, and uh, I thought that was kind of Yeah, funny. that's terrific. I tell you what, we, we'll do a commercial here, Jack, and then uh, we'll come on back, folks. So stay with us. Jack Carr is here. You did uh, the show not only uh, from the studio here, but uh, you did it uh, all, all over the world, actually. Well, I think unlike uh, anyone doing this kind of show now uh, the, uh, on any of the networks, uh, I was, 20 years ago, I, I did the shows like this from Berlin, as you remember, and maybe some of you remember. Um, uh, I think we have from some, uh, Hawaii, from Africa, from Moscow. Let me see what picture uh, here, Jack. It's strange. It was done. I was the first to talk to Castro. Uh, I was there in the revolution, four days after the revolution. I lived beneath Castro in a hotel penthouse suite that was so crazy. Now, did he know who you were? No. Yeah. No, well, what didn't. kind of man was he? I liked him. Yeah? Well, I, I'm not going to get into politics. I'm talking, we're talking about man to sure. man, you know. And um, I remember that in my nervousness, the kind of thing, this is what I used to do. It's, it's hard to understand that it was a big success, but that's what it was. <laughs> and I say dumb things and I say nervous things. And I say honest things. But when Castro came down at 2 o'clock in the morning with nine guys with machine guns guarding him on the fourth day after to see me, because he had promised somebody I would be the first. And when he came down, in my nervousness, I said, you live above me. And he said, you know, grunted. And I said, I hope you didn't come down to borrow sugar. <laughs> well, his eyes rolled back, and he thought, what kind of a thing am I doing here? We have a revolution going with this guy. But, but I, I just didn't know what else to say. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, in this, um, how much time do we have? We have three minutes. OK. Uh, I, the hallway is what reminds me of something interesting today. I met so many people I knew out there. Uh, one time. I went to a party and I met a young lady, kid, 15 years old, and she sang and she wanted to be a star. She looked like uh, a wet sparrow. She weighed about 100 pounds, I think 10 pounds were eyes. She had hair like it was done by the north wind. And uh, I called her mother and said, would you mind if I put her on? And her mother said, Jack, please don't, don't put her on, at least not under her name. If the kid is good, I want her to make it on her own. You give me your word that you put her on under any name, but not her own. And so I said, OK, and we agreed. She looked like a gypsy Hungarian, so I called her Duji Langar. And uh, she was going to be on a certain night. And we got close for your director that now is your director, was Mr. my Gurney, director, sure. best there is in the business, Hal Gurney. And, um, we got cl we got clothes for her, and we got her all fixed up, everything. And she fell and broke her leg. So the phone call came and said, uh, gee, uh, Doogie broke her leg. Uh, she can't go on. And I said, well, obviously she can't go on. You tell the kid that she, as soon as her leg heals, as soon as she can stand and take a bow, she will be on. This, this was a prime time, big show. And so they called back and said, look, Jack, uh, the kid is hysterical. She's broken hearted. This means so much to her. Well, I can I can take a broken leg, but a broken leg and a broken heart. I, Too I, much. No. So I said, okay, we'll put her on. We put her on next week. We had her in a um, in a wheelchair. Her leg was in a, in a big cast up to her hip. We couldn't put a dress on her. She came out in blue jeans. We wheeled her out. But in rehearsal, in this very hallway, 20 feet from where I am, I heard this scream before the show. And I ran out and I said, what in the hell is going on? This child is screaming. And they said, we're trying to get her on the john and the door closed on her, <laughs> on her broken leg. <laughs> so 
anyhow, we finally got her out, and she sang, and she was a smash. And you know who that was? Well, her right name is Liza Minnelli. Big time stuff. And uh, Doozy, Doozy Landgar was a, a reversal, semi-reversal yeah. of Judy Garland. It was Judy Garland's daughter. But this was standard procedure for you. You had a, a, a whole list of folks making their debut on your show. We got to do another commercial, Jack, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Jack Farr is uh, with us. Uh, Grover Washington Jr. will uh, be playing for us a little bit more in the show. Listen, also. I, 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 uh, I've been here long enough. But what I want to do is uh, just show you something I think might be amusing. All right. Might be interesting. You know nothing about it. I know. Okay. Incidentally, can I just say before I go, this is the most modest, the nicest young man. That <laughs> well, Dave, David. Don't waste, don't waste my time applauding for him. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> the thing is, this is the nicest young man I've met in show business in a long time. We oh, live Jack, now come together. on. We, no, no, But no. now I'm going to show you something that he knows nothing about. Only two people know about it. The director who knows about it, and you come with me, yes, dear sir. boy. Now, I never won any, a, a lot of awards, but I have something that's so rare and so touching to me that... And I think funny to you. Just trust me. It is true. It is honest. It, I am not a phony. Come. Cover me, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't come back, God love you. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. This is the hallway. Yeah. This is the hallway. Yeah. Now, can, can they hear me? I hope they hear me. Oh, yeah. Me. We can all, sure. And this is, this is the hallway. That was my studio over there. And then, look, here's a great... Come here once, Dave. Here's a picture of you. Oh, my. Yeah, this, is, look uh, here. this was taken in prison, here's actually. Here's a picture. <laughs> this is, yes, this is an unbelievable uh, yeah, photograph. Yeah, it's a great shot. I didn't know show. that was... And this guy was so wonderful, Charlie yep. Weaver. Cliff Arquette. Yeah. Terrific. And apparently NBC has forgotten this poor devil because look how they spelled his name. Yeah. Tom <laughs> Sindel or something. I don't... Anyhow, come You know, me. the haircut never seems to go out of style. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, All come. Right. Now, listen. Poor Tom. It's not fair to be saying Where? things about Tom. Oh. Now, this, this is the hallway I would walk every night. This is the hallway that uh, Liza Minnelli uh, yelled in. This is about here is where I found Dick Cabot. He was waiting for me, a little kid, right. with his little joke. He wrote for you for a while? Yes, Dick yeah. Cabot. Okay. Now, this was my office. Come here. <laughs> this was my... This was my office. Now, they keep dogs and it's a junk room. It's just nothing. It's, it's, but come here. All right. Now, among the many acts I found and helped in show business, among the many, use this dressing room. Right. One an act one night that now became, that now is very famous. And while I said I never had any awards and was not considered much uh, by many people, the point is when I open this door, you'll see a tribute that was made to me that nobody has seen in 20 years. As a matter of fact, Bob Mulholland, the president of NBC, was here this morning. They had to open this door. This actually was a series of, uh, of steam valves. And this little act that was on my show for the first time, had never been on television, were so nervous, waiting to go on, that they decorated something. I swear to you, this is true. This has not been seen in 20 years. Oh, that's amazing. It says, with love, the Muppets. Yeah. Jim Henson did all of this stuff? Jim Henson did all of that. In, uh, just before the show. Yeah. And it's the only honor I really have. I oh, can't take it home. This is but unbelievable. At least we had a chance to show it. Yeah, that's terrific. Can now, you go any closer? Now, how long did you keep this poor man waiting in here, Jack? <laughs> this, this is like a decade this of work. Has, this has not been seen in 20 years. NBC had the door locked, and I don't think anyone knew what it was. Yeah. Just Hal Gurney and I knew about it. Oh, that's terrific. So, listen, uh, uh, you have a. This a is valuable plumbing now, isn't yes, it? Yeah, that's yeah. very nice. It was good seeing you, kid. Good seeing you, Jack. And thank you for ha having me on. Have a and, good holiday. And, and thank your audience very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.